Okay, so, so we're just going to pray before we get going. And that's some um, P-R-A-Y, not P-R-E-Y. Um, just a joke. <laughs> We've got too many bad jokes running. Now, what, oh, but shut up, Bruce. That's crossing the line. I was going to say, why do choir boys have straight parts, but I'm not going to. Okay, now. Okay, so let's pray. Um, Holy Spirit, Dad and Jesus, thank you for uh, the fact that we're discovering Jesus in us and we never put him there. That's good news. And thank you for that we're discovering your character, which is so really, really good. So we have a request. We ask that you would continue to change what we think, what we feel, what we know, and we give you permission to change our worldviews and our frames and our understandings so that we are more and more and more aligned with what you think, feel, understand, and we can see you more clearly and know your life more clearly. We give you permission. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. So what we've done is we've spoken about the dad and the word Jesus and the spirit and that they're love. Correct? Right. And then we've spoken about the pre-creation purpose. Correct? And then we've spoken about that we're in creation and this was all done. It was made in through the word and he gives it life and sustains it and that there's a thing called darkness which is life without love and that he has now entered this and he's plunged into this and he's recreated humanity as the new Adam in himself and the core of the gospel is whatever happened to him happened to us so we killed him and who did we kill? Ourselves. Ourselves. Pretty good move, wasn't it? And, you know, it's a classical uh, jujitsu move, you know, use their strength against them. So um, now, and then we've said they'll do whatever is required to get us there and that we were forgiven before creation. And they've set up furniture in our mind and structures to help get us there. And this has culminated in a thing called the new covenant, which is your relationship with Father, Son and Spirit is written down and can be stuck on your fridge. How good is that? Right. So. Um, it's there. Now, that's the backdrop. And what we're saying is they are non-negotiables. OK, I'm not going to break any of those. And I don't want anybody who wants to argue with me to break one of those. So if you want to argue with me and say, Bruce, I'm really sorry, um, but the father turned his wife face away from the son. I'm sorry, you just you, you like in another land. I can't even begin to engage you. It's like me saying, have you stopped beating your wife? It's the wrong question because I don't beat her. Well, just answer my question, yes or no. Have you stopped beating your wife? Well, I can't answer your question because it's the wrong frame. You, you, you with me? You ask a question, you know, why well, did the father turn his face away from the son? I can't even begin asking your question because your premise is on a false premise. All right? According to me, according to the ancient church. Okay, so these are the foundations I'm not going to give ground on. And then we enter the love story um, in reality. And for the love story to become real, we had to be made. So let's start forward with creation forward. Let's start with creation. Let's look at creation. Let's look at Adam and the fall of Adam. And what we're going to go in with granularity is what happened to Adam. Why are we doing this? We're going to be defining the flesh. We're going to be defining the flesh and defining the darkness in us. And then what are we doing that for? Because when we've defined the flesh and we've defined the darkness, which is, this is the gospel, we are in Christ. Remember, this is based around John 14, 20. Jesus says, I'm in my Father. So Jesus being in the Father, we've gone through. Now we're going to go, we are in Jesus. So we're part of the creation. That's the next step. The next section after that is Jesus is in us, which is the incarnation and what he worked through. So before we go into the fact that Jesus is in us and what he worked through in his incarnation, we're now in a frame with a backdrop that we've spent time developing. We're now in a frame to look forward at creation. Let's start at creation. Let's come through. Let's look at what Adam built in his brain, right? Let's look at some models that we've, we've taken. Where have these models come from? They've come from me sitting with um, damaged Christians over the years 
and looking at repetitive structures and then building them and realizing, hang on, this goes right back to Adam. It's not new. So let's look at these. And then, then let's come a bit further forward and let's look at this in history and the unfolding of it and then the, you can say the development of the flesh. That's, that's this section which is we are in Jesus. Now, after that section's done, we can look at the work of Jesus, which is he is in us. That's the third section. And the fourth section in this first tranche is in that day. John 14, 20 says, in that day you will know that I'm in the Father. You are Well, in that day's last. That's the fruit of Jesus and what we're living in. And then we can talk about the unfolding of the gospel in ourselves and history. So let's come back. Creation is in Christ. Let's look at creation. Let's look at Adam. Um, let's look at Eve. Let's look at Satan. Let's look at our fallen mind. And let's look at the development of that in history. So all of creation was made inside the eternal Son. Remember, it's inside Father, Son and Spirit, like a womb. It is not, in terms of Greek philosophy, it is not in terms of that separated. It is not God and the universe. It is not pulled apart. All right? Get that really, really clear. The universe, all of it, and all of its beings, without exception, are made, given life and held together in, through, by, for the Word. Eternal Son, Jesus Christ. Now, Colossians 1. And remember this word, in, where they've got in, is translated or given um, by in the English translations, but the Greek word is en, in. For in him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth. Okay, different realms. Whatever you call angels, whatever you call aliens, whatever you call other life forms, heaven and earth, visible and invisible, and doesn't matter what level of power or stratification you put through it, all of them. All were created through him and for him. Okay, so that's pretty good. So you've got all the, all the beings and all the planets, whatever they are, and you've got all the stratification of power above it. Everything is made in, through, by, for, with the word. Mm. John 1, 3. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made. So that's just the beginning. And we've said, in him all things consist, and we've spoken about Zoe, and we've spoken about the giving of life and the sustaining that which was made in it was life. So the giving of life, we don't, we're not battery packs, we don't have life in ourselves. There's life flowing through the universe and it is the life of Christ. And we've discussed that in detail. And we've understood that is the way we think, not that way. Okay, now, so, Father, Son and Spirit come to the universe and they speak to it and they give a command they're making this thing and they say bring forth life kaboom so they speak to the universe and they go bring forth life let there be let there be. And you go through Genesis 1, there's a speak, and then it happens, and it's good. They command it, speak it, and they speak to the universe, whatever the universe is, and it's, br it's bringing forth life, or whatever it is, in command. Now, I'm not asking we, uh, we uh, um, ascertain this story in a scientific fashion. I'm saying we ascertain it as a story of understanding the universe coming in to commands and responding, and God says, it is good. And there's good, 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 good. And then they say, let us make man. Genesis 1. Notice the difference from giving a command to the universe and the universe having emergent life. And notice that there's a difference with actually making man. I'm not, I'm not going to drill into that but some people will pick up the cues there and we can talk maybe more later. But command, good, 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 and then very good. 
Not bad. Now, let's come back before we go any further. What was the pre-creation purpose? Was it that we're caught up in their life, that we know their love? Yeah? Okay. That's pretty good. Okay, so let's, let's continue. We've got a problem. We've got a problem. It says in Genesis 2, it's not good that man is alone. Now talk about a Jewish understatement, a massive Jewish understatement. It is not good that man is alone. Hang on, hang on, hang on. You're meant to be, your pre-eternal purpose, which we've dragged out of the New Testament and we've laid out as point number two, the pre-eternal purpose is that you're meant to be caught up in these relationships and now you're made and you're alone. Well, what do you mean alone? Well, in Genesis 2, you've got what's called the um, the meeting place, the council of God. You've got Yahweh, Elohim, all the angels in Eden, the whole flipping lot, and man's alone. Yahweh, Elohim, plurality, and then you've got alone. Is that in line with the pre-eternal purpose? And they've got this understatement verifying it. It's not good that man should be alone. And people say, oh, Bruce, Bruce, look, you're getting that wrong. It's about not man not having a wife. I go, really? I go, yeah. God's not into bestiality because he brings animals to him. Oh. It wasn't about that. It was about man's alone in the middle of plenty and they bring the animals to him and it doesn't work. So they make him a wife. So they've gone from pretty pleased you got ple good 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 very good and then genesis 2 it's not good now what's gone wrong between the good and the not good we don't know and there's no reference in the scripture to it and there's nothing that we can dig out it is the beginning of evil you know how we said back here that the darkness has life in it but in its life it doesn't know love uh-huh and where there is no nothing other than life even even evil people are flowing in the life of Christ what they're doing is that life is just operating through darkness and making death right there isn't any other reference except Zoe the life of God filling the universe we can live that in life or we can live that in death so what's happened to Adam he's starting to get blind and this is the study of evil, which is theodicy. And we do not even know why this happened. So that's our calling, to be like that. And then all of a sudden, dear old Adam, and it wasn't about a wife, as we said, dear old Adam has moved to that. He's moved to blindness. And that's us. So we've got the building, we've got the building of this darkness we've got the building of our flesh now this is a mystery it's the mystery of iniquity we don't know what it is and this mystery is going to be bet by another mystery the mystery of aloneness will be met by another mystery the mystery of godliness the incarnation God coming into our darkness into our flesh we don't know how it happened and we even don't know how the incarnation is going to occur. He appeared in the flesh, was vindicated of the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the nations, believed on and taken up into glory. We don't know how we became blind and we don't know how the incarnation occurred. So, if I if I was meant to be caught up in relationship with Father and Word and Spirit, Father, Son and Spirit, and I'm made for that, yes, pre-eternal purpose, and now I'm blind and I can't see and I'm alone in the middle of plenty, what's going to go on in my soul? I'm going to be looking for a relationship. I'm going to be looking for something. I'm going to be needing relationship and I'm not going to be getting it. What's going to go off? 
and we start meeting ourselves. What we meet, we were made for spiritual attachment relationship in us and we're complete when that is flowing, but all of a sudden we meet an emptiness. We were made inside a union for that union and now we're blind to it. We were made for a familial relationship and now we don't have it. In modern lingo we call this attachment. So to turn away and whether Adam turned or we don't know what happened. Um, Paul Young uses different language. I, I, I can't put granularity inside it. When we come back, we, we hit with this wall that Adam was alone. But to be alone or be blinded, this occurs within the fabric, the fabric, the structure, the holding of what should be in our spiritual attachment structure. So to close off, um, to be blinded, to turn away, and our aloneness, it sits in an echo. It's sitting in a frame, an echo of what we were called for. Ouch. I have inside me, you, I'm meant to be your son. I'm meant to be in union with you. I'm meant to be held by you. And even if it's pre-verbal, even if it's not in words, and the aloneness sits against the echo, the calling of your sonship and your daughterhood. So I look at Adam's aloneness in Genesis 2 and I see the beginning of what we call our black hole sitting there. And you want to be blunt about it, the only reason we've got pain, like a black hole, is we were made for relationship, we were made for a calling. And if Adam's blind and the calling's there, pain takes off. If there was no calling, there is no pain. Ouch. So because of this wrapping of Father, Son and Spirit and the calling and our blindness, this pain emerges and we're, we're in a difficult situation as, as humans. We just don't know what to do. It. And, and um, so the presence of them in us is the basis of our pain. And this pain is only going to be relieved ultimately, and now you kick right to where we started. This pain is ultimately going to be revealed by the unveiling of the love of the Father, Son and Spirit in us. The love which you, you love me might be in them and I in them. So you go right back to Genesis 2 where Adam's alone before you start and that's not what we're called for and then you meet Jesus just going to the before he goes to get beaten up by Judas and the temple police and the Roman soldiers, he says that this love may be in them. And you go, yeah, that's you and that's me. That's our deep pain. Yeah, we, we, we need that. We're made for an attachment. And um, what am I going to do when that doesn't work? And I've got this black hole. Then I'm going to start doing other things, aren't I? I'm going to start building other identities. I'm going to start all sorts of things. So we are beginning to see the emergence of human activity and human desires for things and sitting under this will be a very big fat, I am not. And in response to that very big fat, I am not, we're going to have a very big, I will be. So that's just, that's just the beginning and we're going to unpack that in the mental health section. This is just looking at we're in Jesus Christ. Now, if I'm alone, if I'm alone and I've got pain and I don't know very well at relating, what am I going to do to you when I'm in pain and do I have the capacity to make you another? Where, where are we 
for, for example, with the sacred presence that I'm acknowledging Christ is in you, you're part of me, I'm part of you. Where is that? It's gone. I'm alone and I've got pain. I've now got the capacity to other you. While I'm alone, I have the capacity to do violence to others because you're not part of me. There's no connection. No connection. And you go, wow, this is, this is pretty fundamental. This aloneness of Adam, this enables us to do the violence that we ultimately do to Jesus. We make another and God comes down, we other and we kill him. But through human histories, we make others of people and um, then we kill them. Now this making of others, this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning of the othering because we're gonna be talking about the development of a conscience. Now, you combine deep internal pain, where I've got my pain and I'm separate from you, you combine that with me having a conscience, which is a capacity to say good, bad, and to split and granularly divide people to where you are no good, and you are no good, and you are no good. I can other you, and then I can judge them, and then I'm validated in the killing of you. We don't do this as humans, do we? So we're only, we're only on Genesis 2.